Well, hi, and welcome to another segment of While We're Apart. We were talking yesterday about the subject of aggravations, dealing with aggravations. The Bible says that the continual dropping on a very rainy day and a contentious woman are alike. This is talking about an irritation. This is talking about something that perplexes us. It's a nuisance. It's, it's something that it's annoying and it causes friction. Now, we've looked at the fact that already uh, there are situations that cause aggravations and there are nothing we can really do about a lot of those situations. Secondly, there's self that causes aggravation. There are some things we do that they boomerang back toward us, and as a result, they cause some serious frustration, and it's self-imposed. Then after self, there's, there's the saints, <laughs> and the saints can cause some irritation. And then fourthly, there is society. There's society, and you can't get away from society. In fact, in, in 1 Corinthians 5.10, it speaks of separating from the covetous or extortioners or with idolaters, and then it adds, for then must you needs go out of this world. There's no way you can get away from society. If, if, if you live amongst this, this present world, there's going to be a lot of frustrations. You're going to find people that take um, the next to the last parking spot, and they leave one, but they're halfway over the line. And there you are looking at that and you can't use it. Or maybe you're going to have a neighbor that blows their leaves over on your lot in the fall. Or maybe you're going to have a neighbor whose dandelions put their little seeds all over your lawn. Maybe it's going to be a, a loud dog. Uh, maybe it's going to be something else, loud music. But we're going, to, we're going to see society getting on our nerves. And to get away from it, you'd have to go out of this world. We see the friction. But secondly, let's talk about the fermentation the fermentation of an aggravation, the festering of it. There, there are some aggravations and they're repairable. They're, they're resolvable. You know, that neighbor's dog that's barking. That's what duct tape is for, right? No, just kidding. Um, but, but I've heard of somebody doing that. But there are some things that are they're fixable, you know, dripping faucet or a squeaky door. Uh, there are some things you can resolve them, but, but there are some things that... Uh, they just get under your, your skin and you, and you can't do much about those things. And normally they involve people. It's normally a people problem. You know, I had a wise preacher years ago. He had been staying in town here. He was preaching for us at, at the church here. And the night before he was staying in a motel and the, the folks next door were up and loud and rowdy. And, and uh, finally, the pastor just called the, the desk and said, could I have another room? He was very gracious about it. And they gave him another room. And he told me the next morning, he said, you know, I've learned over the years, you can't change people. You can only change the way you react to people. And I have never forgotten that. How do we react to people? What happens when aggravations begin to ferment? And, and they're like in, in this can with a lid on it. That can is your heart. And, and, they, and they grow and they rot and they ferment. And, and uh, you go, all right, this is, this is reaching a boiling point. It's kind of like when Peter went to the Lord and he said, Lord, how many times should I forgive my neighbor? Till seven times? Now, he must have had somebody in mind, somebody that was getting on his nerves and he was really getting sick of having to turn the other cheek. And of course, the Lord said, no, not seven times, but 70 times seven. So how do we react? How do we keep from reacting wrongly or, or giving the wrong response? Because our aggravations can turn into anger if, if we allow them to stew and fume and, and we, we, we allow them to build and this resentment grows and there's that aggravation in there and it's brewing. In Ecclesiastes 7 and in verse number 9, the Bible says, Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger resteth in the bosom of fools. It's talking about those aggravations resting in that bosom, fermenting until they become anger and God at that point labeling us a fool. He, he says, anger resteth in the bosom of fools. It's, it's in the heart there and it's, it's festering and it's fuming. And it's just a matter of time until it comes out through the mouth. Because the Bible says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Inevitably, it's going to come out of the mouth. And when it comes out, it's going to be toward the spouse. It's going to be toward the co-worker. It's going to be toward the children. It's going to be toward the church member. It's going to be toward the friend or the family. 
When it reaches a point, it's got to come out. You know, the Bible tells us of Joseph's brethren who were jealous of him. In Genesis 37, 4, it says, And all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. There was so much resentment in that heart that they couldn't even open their mouth and speak peaceably toward him. Now, what do we do when this thing is festering and this thing is fermenting? Because without fail, it's going to come out. It's going to lead to something we regret, a decision that, that was a bad one. You know, Joseph's brothers ended up selling him into slavery because of those little irritations and aggravations turning to anger and then to hatred. Cain murdered his brother Abel. You know, King Saul went after David and tried to kill him. Haman tried to get rid of Mordecai. And there's a long list in the Bible. When that thing festers and ferments, it's just a matter of time until it blows. So as Christian people, what do we do with aggravations? We've seen the fermentation, but there's really actually a function to aggravations. God allows them in our lives for a reason. And, and these people who get on our nerves and, and those, those, those uh, characteristics that they have about them, there's a reason for them getting on our nerves and God allowing that. And sometimes it's so that we can see that we have our own little idiosyncrasies and we aggravate people as well. You know, others can be a little reflector of us to get us to see something. So when an irritation pops up, it's probably a good time for a self-examination. And really all of us are depraved and, and we've all messed up and, and we all have some character flaws. And the goal of the Heavenly Father is to get us to be more Christ-like and, and to get us to be more like the Master. And so aggravations can really cause us to look within and force us to say, all right, is part of this blame me? Or did I do something to bring this out in that person? Or is, is this you, Lord, making the man or making the person as it were? Now, this is the way to grow in love. And, and today as we close, let me encourage you to allow God to bring those aggravations into your life, to give you growth and make you more like our Lord Jesus Christ. When we asunder part, it gives us inward pain, but we shall still be joy.